Thanks for joining me again. So I've been asked if the narcissist had narcissistic parents and what his parents were like. His mother was nothing more than a doormat and his father was absolutely a narcissist. If you looked at him cross-eyed, you were done. He wouldn't speak to you. He'd have nothing to do with you. What I did observe that I found interesting later on, I didn't figure this out right away, when the children were small, small when our children were small, the other children in the family, he is, um, the narcissist is the youngest of three children, a brother and then a sister and then him. And they also have children. I found that when the kids were little, grandfather, the narcissist father, um, we'll call him the grand narcissist, I found that the grand narcissist was very easy to get along with and friendly with the kids. He'd give them their pats on the head and, and have candy for them and want to show them things. And I realized that as they got older, say into their teens, you know, right around that age where they kind of start thinking for themselves and they have their own opinions and they have their own attitude, his attitude changed as well. And I didn't piece this all together until much later on when I started doing a lot of reading and research and had maybe gone to therapy and had a better understanding of what I was dealing with when it came to our children and the narcissist that I was married to. And I can see now the pattern when children are small and they are impressionable and you can tell them what to do and you can boss them around, they're great. Once they start to think for themselves, once they start to form their own personalities and opinions about things, the narcissists become more difficult to deal with. They find that the kids are not so fun to be around. They start to show a lot of attitude and a lot of authority and they become very harsh. Not quite so uh, easy to get along with. I noticed it with the grand narcissist and I noticed it with my own narcissist. And they will probably, they would probably both deny it to the death until they were blue in the face. But that is an observation that I made and I believe it to be true because when children are small, they can influence them and boss them around and tell them what to do. You're supposed to do everything that the narcissist tells you to do and they can't possibly be wrong. So if you have an opinion of your own, that's a problem. And I saw that as our children were getting older too, that um, when they, came into those teen years and they were becoming the people that they are today and they are people that I absolutely love. I think they're wonderful, very loving, caring children. He found nothing but criticism. He still just did nothing but criticize. And I had a real problem with that because as a parent and as a mother, I, I just couldn't, I couldn't understand that. I couldn't see that perspective where you're just critical of your children. All you do is criticize and tear them down and belittle them and point out all the wrongdoings and point out all the mistakes and the flaws. And I don't know, I, I guess maybe that was done to him. That's all he knew. I'm, I'm not sure. I wasn't around when he was growing up. I wasn't around uh, to see what his upbringing was like, but knowing his parents, for those 24 years, I would imagine that's exactly how it was. I would imagine that his dad ran his narcissistic mouth and tore them down and belittled them because he would do it in front of anybody. He had no filter. He didn't care if what he said hurt anybody or offended anybody. He was just going to say what he wanted to say and I thought he was a world-class jerk. His mother just stood by and had this nervous laugh and I thought, how do you do that? How do you just stand by? and let that person tear your kids up. Let them belittle them. Let them say things to embarrass them. I, as a mother, I could never understand that. I could never understand it. And he always would start screaming and yelling. You're always on their side. You're, you know, you, you always take up for them. I, I thought that mothers defended their children. I thought that, you know, mothers always looked out for their children. I think they do that even in the wild. It was, it was just a bad situation. It was always, you know, us butting heads. <laughs> there, there was just no respect between us. I would tell him, I'd say, well, I'm just being a mom. I know you wouldn't recognize one if you saw one, uh, but that's what I'm doing. It, it was that bad because I thought to myself, she, to me, she was a terrible mother to stand idly by and let this man verbally tear her children up. 
you just don't do that and that at least that's my opinion that was always my opinion you don't stand by and let anybody tear your children up even if it happens to be your husband that's where the problems would start that's exactly where the problems would start it was one thing to you know talk to them about bad behavior or you know poor behavior or bad grades or you know breaking some kind of rules or whatever I mean he would just go on and on and on. there was no end to it when he would get started there was just no end it was like he had to listen to himself he wanted to hear himself carrying on endlessly and you know you just address it and it's done and it's over I, I couldn't understand all that pedanting I also couldn't understand berating the kids and belittling them whether it be in front of their siblings or friends and he had no problem doing that at all I think he well he's a narcissist he had a real bang out of that deflating other people inflated him and so for him that was that was prime when he had an audience that was just great and not even knowing that I was dealing with a narcissist not even knowing what I was dealing with I felt like well if you want to get your message across you talk to them one-on-one -on -one. you get their attention and you you know hope that they're that they're focused and they're understanding what it is you're saying rather than sitting there stewing upset because you're embarrassing them and cursing you instead of getting the message whatever it might be that you're trying to get across this this was just it was just ongoing it was just ongoing and every molehill was turned into a mountain because there was no middle ground there was no middle ground I could not I could not agree with him I could not side with him when he carried on the way he did to me it was outrageous to me it was overboard to me it was just way over the top and far more than it needed to be when it came to dealing with our children he had no relationship with his own parents um, I was very close to mine until recently I with my mother and all you probably saw that in one of the prior videos um, I had a very close relationship with my dad and anybody that's been watching knows that and so I could not understand not speaking to my parents. His parents lived 15 minutes away from us and he was lucky to speak to them a couple times a year. And wouldn't you know, hold on to your hats, you won't believe this, he blamed me. Oh, I don't have a relationship with my family because of you. There's always blame. There's always finger pointing. If he didn't have a relationship with his family, it had nothing to do with me. They're all cold. They're all distant. No one cares about anybody else. That's just how they are. Very cold, distant people. I never felt like I was a part of that family. I don't believe that I ever did anything wrong to any of them. I just think that they're all cold and distant and just don't care. And he never, ever, ever made any moves to try to... Uh, close that gap be closer to his parents I mean 15 minutes away that is insane you don't even see them or call them or stop by or talk to them something is wrong when it came to my mother yeah I tried everything I you have to be able to live with yourself you have to be able to live with yourself and say you know what I've tried it I went there I did that it's not working and if they are that toxic, then you do have, you stay away. I just think that they were all cold and callous and didn't care about each other. If that makes a narcissist, then that's what made him. I don't know where that behavior comes from. I don't know how it's formed. I, I, I don't understand it because I'm a caring person. And I cared very much about my parents. I cared very much about my father. And because my mom is a narcissist, I've had to separate myself from her because she stepped right in and took over where he left off when I left him. When I left the narcissist, she picked right up and tried to take over where he left off and just making me miserable and making me unhappy and berating me day in and day out. And I don't believe that I deserve that. I don't think anybody deserves that. And you just get to a point in your life where you say, you know what, enough is enough. And life is far too short. It's just too short to spend it unhappy. It's too short to spend it waiting around in someone else's drama. That's just something I won't do anymore. I just refuse to do it. I don't I don't need anybody else's drama. 
life brings enough on its own in just day-to-day -day happenings. Um, so to leave yourself open to someone else's, if you can protect yourself, if you can somehow shield yourself from it, absolutely you should. And that is something that I struggled with and I don't anymore because I see, I see what life is supposed to be like. You know, you're supposed to wake up and feel good. You're supposed to go to bed and feel good. You're supposed to deal with, you know, your average daily trials, not inflicted drama by somebody else who can't live without it. My mom cannot live without drama. My sister cannot live without drama. I want nothing to do with that. I don't need it. Narcissists can't live without drama. They will blame you. They will absolutely blame you and everybody around them for all of the drama. They absolutely bring it on. Without him, I don't have drama. So where was that really coming from? Where was it really rooted? It was with him. They like the drama. They like causing it and stirring it up and then sitting back and saying, oh, look what you did. Look at that. Wow. You know, finger pointing. That's all they're about is finger pointing. I do have some other questions that were um, posed to me and I will answer them in the next video. Thanks for joining me. I hope that you join me next time.